What's up, everyone? Bales here to give you a free college football pick for the Ohio State-Minnesota game on Thursday, September 2nd. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetMGM. If you use the code that we have linked in the description below, just click show more, you'll find the code. Uh, you will receive a risk-free $600 welcome offer from BetMGM. So I would go ahead and do that because that is where we are taking the odds from for this game. Prior to actually breaking down the game, I do want to quick outline my college football schedule uh, for the season. I think that's rather important. You can find uh, my bets in several different places. One, on videos on this channel. So you're going to want to subscribe, turn on the notifications because they are time sensitive as the lines change uh, relatively fast generally. But I will post videos on this channel throughout the season. Two, I will have bets on betkarma.com. They're completely free. They will be articles. Uh, you can read them whenever you want. Again, obviously time sensitive. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter. I always uh, post them out. You can follow Bet Karma on Twitter. And uh, three, I will be posting bets on my Twitter. As always, those will also be free. So you can follow me there. It's at Bales S. Justin. I will also have that in the description below. And four, I will drop all of my bets for the entire season 100% free in the DFS and Bet Karma Discord. That can be found at chatdfs.com. You go uh, to that specific site, it'll send you a link, get in our Discord, it's 100% free. And that is where you can find all of my bets for the entire season. So let's get down to the Ohio State-Minnesota game. Uh, Ohio State is currently on BetMGM a minus 14 point favorite. The odds are minus 110. So relatively a, a normal line that you're looking at this one. They will travel to Minnesota to play them. It's the opening week, so I don't expect anything weird where one team uh, isn't ready to play this game. I think both teams will be excited. Uh, they'll be ready to go. And I don't expect this to kind of be a lull for Ohio State or anything. I think they're going to come in guns blazing to kind of prove uh, what they're about this season. I think it's important to note that Ohio State has won every home or not every home opener, every opener of their season or season opener, I guess would be a better way to put it. That sounds so dumb. But every season opener uh, since 2015 by at least 18 points, the average margin of uh, victory 36 and a half points. Now, obviously, um, they have some some big blowouts in there. I think they won 77 to 10 against Bowling Green, but they also do have some very solid wins. Uh, they played Virginia Tech the one year, so it's not always a cupcake matchup that's just really going to completely pad their stats. Uh, they do come out firing in most cases. I would assume that this is going to be the same this season. Uh, just looking at a little trends from 2020, Ohio State was only 4-4 four and four against the spread. They did have a 15.2 average margin of victory. Uh, they were 2-0 on the road, so uh, significantly better there than the 2-4 and four at home. Uh, they won their road games by 26.5 points, but once again, only two of them because it was the COVID season. Minnesota ended the season... Um, four and three against the spread. They Their average margin of victory was negative 2.9 points, meaning they lost uh, by an average of 2.9 points. And then uh, they were one and two at home, so not great. And they lost those games by an average of 16.7 points. So when you look at this, this game, I think it's pretty cut and dry that Ohio State wins. I don't actually think that Minnesota is a live dog. I think the big question now becomes, do they cover 14 points? Two touchdowns is quite a bit. Um, and one of the big things that, that's going to control what happens is who controls the tempo. Last season, Ohio State ranked 43rd uh, in plays per game. Minnesota ranked 77th. But if you only take their final three games, uh, they averaged slightly under 67 uh, plays per game, would have ranked outside of the top 100. I think it's pretty clear that when you look at the talent on both sides and what they have to do, Minnesota is going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to run out the clock. Uh, meanwhile, Ohio State is, they have several ways to beat Minnesota. Um, so Minnesota doesn't want the ball in their hands. They, they want to kind of make this game as short as possible. 
They returned all five starting linemen uh, from the 2020 season. They added two starters from the 2019 season that were out with injury in 2020. And they added a two-year starter from Utah State, meaning Minnesota has eight offensive linemen uh, that are viable options this season. It's going to be a really, really good, experienced group. And then, obviously, Muhammad Ibrahim is one of the best running backs in the country. Uh, it, it just makes sense that they're going to feed him in this game. They're going to try to uh, control what happens with the run. I don't think that they're going to want to get into a shootout with Tanner Morgan um, trying to come back to his his former self and uh, that he that he flashed in 2019. Very good season in 2019. Took a massive step back, which. I know a lot of people were kind of predicting in 2020, but just the way that he regressed was, it was pretty crazy. Um, so I guess the question then becomes how effectively is Minnesota able to run the ball, uh, waste the clock, shorten the game, stop Ohio State's offense uh, from being able to hit those big plays and everything. If you look at it, they essentially need to control the trenches. Um, I, I know that sounds like it's going to be easier for a team like Minnesota, and I think generally on the season they will because they have so much experience at offensive line, so much depth that if anything happens, you know, they're just going to replace them with, with another solid starter. The problem specifically in this game is that Ohio State, uh, they rank fourth in their defensive line uh, rankings for Phil Steele heading into the season. They're anchored uh, by Garrett Haskell senior defensive tackle it's going to be very difficult uh to move him around and then obviously they have the number one overall recruit in the country in jack sawyer so i do believe that it's going to be very very difficult for them to push back the ohio state defensive line the big question mark that that kind of is floating around as ohio state is what happens with the linebackers they have very little experience there um no one is really overly confident in the linebackers it's just a question of how much do you think that matters uh, versus Ohio State's defensive line kind of holding their ground in, in this type of a situation. So if you look at it in, in 2020, Ohio State allowed the fifth least um, amount of rushing yards per game, 97.6. They allowed only 3.4 yards per carry. It, it's more or less, can Minnesota find consistent rushing success? And I don't believe that they will, which means they're going to have to, at some point in time in this game, rely more on Tanner Morgan. And it's not an overly impressive group of wide receivers for Minnesota. They go against a group led by Seven Banks that's going to be one of the top secondaries. So uh, I have a hard time believing that Minnesota is effectively going uh, to be able to run their offense. Uh, not only are they going to have to stop Ohio State's, but if they can't get the run game going, they're in a very bad position just with the fact that you can't be turning the ball over or anything against Ohio State. And I would expect that Morgan is really going to struggle with something like that. So we can move to Ohio State's offense. Um, it, it's pretty safe to say that it's absolutely stacked. It's going to be one of the best offenses uh, in the entire country. Uh, they have Phil Steele's number two ranked offensive line group, so they should be able to control uh, more or less the way that they want to play. Master Teague's coming back. He's averaging 5.5 yards per carry throughout his entire career. Um, Travion Henderson is a top 10 recruit that they're bringing in. He's going to uh, see plenty of carries, especially if Teague can't get it going early. So multiple backs that they use. They have a few others that they can spell in and out as well. So I would assume that they're one of the best rushing attacks in the entire country. They also have the best wide receiver duo, probably the best wide receiver group in the entire nation. Um, Chris Olave didn't enter the NFL draft. He came back. He'll pair with Garrett Wilson. It is the best college duo uh, in all of football. And then they have some high ups or um, a high upside freshman in Emeka Egbuka. Um, very high recruit. He, he's coming in. I wouldn't be shocked to see him kind of come along slowly, especially with uh, Wilson and Olave doing, you know, most of the heavy lifting. Um, but but he should be a, a really really good option. And then Jeremy Rucker is going to be one of the best tight ends in the country, most likely. So it just adds a little bit more of a dimension to that offense. 
um, you have to sit and think the question mark, and this is probably kind of weird because I doubt he's ever been called a question mark throughout his entire career, but the question mark this season for Ohio State is going to be C.J. Stroud. He won the job. Um, He's the starting quarterback. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, the number two pro-style quarterback in all of the country. I have no issues with him whatsoever. It's just a lack of experience, and I think that people really need something that they can kind of knock Ohio State on. So this is where it's going. Uh, Ryan Day has uh, consistently featured elite quarterbacks. Like, um, over and over, we we see Ohio State just their quarterbacks dominate left and right. It's not really going to stop, I don't think, with Stroud. I think he's performed well enough that we can pretty much trust him, especially with one of the best offensive lines and the best wide receiver group in the entire country. Not to mention... Even if he does struggle, they still have one of the best rushing attacks. So there's just so many ways for them to score points. And I think that they're going to put up quite a big score, uh, even in Minnesota. So at that point, this kind of becomes more or less can Minnesota shoot out with them, um, assuming that they don't have the ability to control the tempo. The answer to that is obviously no. To conclude everything, um, it's basically... Can Minnesota utilize their run game to extend their drives? Uh, They just need to limit the amount of uh, opportunities that Ohio State's offense gets because they're so explosive. I don't expect that to happen. I expect Ohio State's defensive line to dictate this. I expect them to force Minnesota to make Tanner Morgan beat them or at least try to keep it close, and I don't believe that he's going to do that. I think he turns the ball over too much. I think that Ohio State's defense is too good, and I do believe that they're going to get more pressure on the quarterback this year than they did last year because that's more or less what they struggled with. Overall, the bet will be Ohio State minus 14. The odds are minus 110. Again, that is on BetMGM. You can find our link to that in the description below. If you click on that, you will get a risk-free $600 welcome offer from them. Again, follow me on Twitter, BalesSJustin, also in the description. Join our chat room, uh, chatdfs.com, and uh, make sure that you're checking out the website, betkarma.com. Everything that you need for the college football season will be found in those places. You'll get all of our bets for free. It's not just me. We have a whole group doing it. So I do believe that for Thursday, this is the best bet that you can make in a top game. Ohio State, minus 14 with minus 110 odds. Good luck if you follow.